Good morning, John's. Good morning, today's announcements. Join us for our next drive-by on Saturday, April 3rd, 2021, from 11 a.m. until 12 noon. Drive by to see Pastor Wallace, First Lady Carita Wallace, and the St. John's Volunteers. Come out to receive your communion cup and bring your gifts. We look forward to seeing you. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's family for weekly prayer call every Wednesday and Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Start your morning with gratitude and grace and be blessed by prayer. The dial-in number is 425-436-6308, access code 312522. Did you know that St. John's is on the radio? That's right, every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. on Tap On Radio, 1070 on the a.m. dial. Join Pastor Wallace and the St. John's Choir for a spiritual experience you don't want to miss. You can download the Tap On Radio app, click on radio, and click on the broadcast. Join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Zoom Sunday School. For those who wish to phone in, please dial 646-558-8656. Enter the meeting ID number 876-504-23516 and the passcode is 047309. Be sure we have your email address so you are added to the weekly invite. Join St. John's family and friends every Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. for Zoom Bible study. An email notification will be sent to all on our distribution list. However, if you do not currently receive notifications from the church, please call or email us your email address so we can add you to the weekly invite. During this time, if you are in need, know that the church is here for you. Please call the church and leave a detailed message and a deacon will be in touch with you. The work of the church continues because of you. We are extremely thankful for your continued financial support to St. John's. Whether your stewardship is online by simple give, mail to the church, or during a drive-by, may God continue to bless you and your family abundantly in 2021. If you find that our services have been a blessing to you and you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so and click the subscribe button so you receive an alert when new services are posted. Additionally, if you are looking for a church home, do consider St. John's. Call the church office and leave a message and we will get in touch with you. As we pray for the sick and the elderly, let us also pray one for another in this difficult time. Here at the Dome, the building may be closed, but the church is still open. Let's all do our part to wash our hands for 20 seconds, wear a mask, and social distance, as we'll all get through this better together. Have a blessed day.
Praise the Lord. Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Baptist Church. On behalf of Reverend Sean T. Wallace, First Lady Carita Wallace, and the entire St. John's family, please bow your heads in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the air that we breathe, the steps that we walk, because you, we know that you ordered them, Lord Jesus. Thank you for bringing us thus far through this difficult time, Lord Jesus. Bless all the essential workers, all the teachers, all the EMTs. Bless our government officials. Please guide them as we go through this difficult time. We ask that you just Bless us with health, strength, and just we praise you for what you have done thus far. Continue to be with us as we go through our day by day. In Jesus' name we pray. I will be reading Psalm 34, 1 through 9. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. And the angel of the Lord encamps around about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. It is my honor, privilege, and joy to greet you this morning, Sunday, March 28, 2021, the day that we recognize and celebrate the triumphant entry of Jesus the Christ into Jerusalem. Today is the beginning of our Holy Week, where we travel with Jesus from Jerusalem to Calvary. What starts out as a cry of Hosanna and the spreading of palms concludes with the death, burial, resurrection, and ultimate victory of our Lord and Savior. Songwriter had it right when he penned the words, living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified, freeing me forever. One day he's coming back, glorious day. Brothers and sisters, our monthly drive-by is coming up this week, Saturday, April 3rd at 11 a.m. At the drive-by, you will receive your palms, you will receive your communion elements, and we're asking if you haven't done so already, please bring your special sacrificial Lenten offering of $40. I can't wait to see each and every one of you. Three years ago, on a fourth Sunday, March 25th, 2018, I was installed as the pastor of the St. John's Baptist Church of Scotch Plains, New Jersey. And what a journey this has been. Let me express my gratitude to each and every one of you and say on behalf of me and my family, thank you. Thank you for allowing God to place us together and thank you for all of your prayers, support, and encouragement. I still believe that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things that God has in store for pastor and people. As we prepare to hear a word from the Lord, it's my pleasure to introduce our guest celebrant for the day. Reverend Dr. Ralph M. Branch Jr. is the pastor of the Mount Calvary Baptist Church of North New Jersey. He is the moderator of the North Jersey District Missionary Baptist Association. He serves on the parent body of the General Baptist Convention of New Jersey. He is a phenomenal preacher and he is a friend and a brother beloved. The next voice that you will hear after the ministry of music is that of God through the preacher, Reverend Dr. Ralph M. Branch, Jr. Hear ye him. the shadows come why should my heart
Indeed, we give God praise, honor, and glory for the opportunity to stand in this place one more time. When we think about the fact that had it not been for the Lord on our side, oh, where would we be? We honor today the esteemed pastor of this great and historic church, beloved brother and friend, Pastor Sean Wallace. We acknowledge and thank God for First Lady and the entire church family here at the St. John's Church. To all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we declare that this is the day that the Lord hath made and truly we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We celebrate today what the Lord has done three years of leading the people of Scotch Plains, three years of navigating the people of God through some of the most treacherous waters we've seen in some of our lives. And yet our report is the same. God is still good all of the time. I wonder if there's a witness watching today who would declare it, that after all that I've been through, I can say that the Lord is still mighty good. We're not going to take much of your time this morning, and there is a word from the Lord. If you have your Bibles with you, won't you go with me to the Old Testament, to the book of Jeremiah. I'm going to go to Jeremiah chapter number 29, and we shall read verses 4 through 11 again. Jeremiah 29, beginning at verse number 4 and reading down through verse number 11. The Bible declares, This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because if it propers, prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for this another day. We thank you, God, for life, health, and strength. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. We thank you, Father, that we are yet in the land of the living, yet clothed in our right minds. And we declare that today, God, we shall give you glory because you are worthy of all the praise. And now, Father, it is your servant's prayer that you would allow me to decrease that the presence of the Holy Spirit might increase. And Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. For indeed, God, you are my strength and my redeemer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God said, Amen.
God says to his prophet, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I want to talk this morning for just a few moments from the subject. It's all a part of the plan. It's all a part of the plan. These words, up until recently, seem to fit and be appropriate. These words are words that we don't have a difficult time applying to our lives as long as life is moving in the way that we would want it to move. When blessings are flowing and it seems that we are living in a land of milk and honey. We can declare this is part of God's plan. When everything that we touch prospers, we don't have a problem declaring that it's part of God's plan. But how do we respond when the plan goes left? How do we respond when the plan is not according to what we thought? How many of us today, as we look back over our lives, if we could rewrite our own personal history, how many of us would change some of those pages? How many of us would remove some of the chapters where things did not go according to our plans? Here we celebrate year number three. And for some, Pastor, if we had our way, we would remove year number two because year number two is rough. Year number two, you probably had more funerals than you ever thought you'd have. Year number two was rough. Year number two saw a whole lot of folk getting sick and are yet dying. Year number two was rough. But I would challenge you today to change how we look at it. Year number two was rough. But I believe God might have been setting us up for what God's about to do. For the words of God that he declares to the prophet Jeremiah are yet true even unto us. God declares, I know the plans I have for you. And so often we would rather go with what we think as opposed to going what God declares he knows. We'd rather go with our hunch on how things are only bad and getting worse. But God still says, I know the plans I have for you. Somebody ought to be able to declare right now that as rough as year number two was, God was still good. As difficult as the way God, God was still good. If you don't believe me, you ought to be able to look in the mirror and show yourself as living evidence of the goodness of God. Because while others are gone, you're still here. God declares through his prophet, one that we have come to know as the weeping prophet. The one who makes lamentations unto God because of the weight of his responsibility. The prophet who has to declare unto the people of God that God is still an almighty God. One who has to declare unto the people even when they don't want to listen that God is sovereign and he is God all by himself. Sort of like the crowds we have to deal with now. The crowds who want everything easily and they want everything right now don't want to work for it, but they still want it. Don't want to be patient. They expect it to happen in the moment. But we must declare that God is still in control. I don't know how you feel about it today, but Moderna doesn't make God more God. Pfizer doesn't make God more God. Johnson & Johnson doesn't make God more God. God is still an able God and he's God all by himself. And God speaks to the people through the prophet. God says to them, listen, I'm about to put you in exile in Babylon. I'm about to put you in a set of circumstances that if you had your own choice, you would not choose these, but trust God anyhow. And God says to them, while you're in exile, don't, don't cry about it, don't mourn about it, don't get nervous about it. While you're in that unfamiliar place, God says, I want you to build houses. 
I want you to settle down. I want you to plant gardens. I want you to eat what those gardens produce. And every now and then God will allow a storm to blow in your life. And instead of trying to get out of the storm, God is telling you to build in the storm. God is telling you to plant fruit in the storm. God is telling you to settle down in the storm. Is there anyone here that can declare tonight that yes, in the middle of the storm, that is when God did some building on me. I had to go through some difficult spots in order to see what God was trying to do. I had to bury some folk in order to see God. I had to cry some time in order to see God. Let me tell you, your situation does not limit the power of God. God tells them, build houses, settle down plant gardens, eat what they produce, marry and have sons, have daughters, have wives, have children, let your children have wives and husbands and let them settle down. What God is really trying to tell us is that even in rough situations, you can still see the goodness of the Lord. I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit leery about people that can only shout when things are going their way. I'm a little nervous about people that can only shout when all of their bills are paid. I'm, I'm a little afraid of people that can only shout when they've gotten a good report of health from the doctor. I wonder if there's anybody watching today that can give God glory because the doctor told you on Friday you had cancer, but you know that your God has never lost a patient. I wonder if there's anybody that can give God glory because while you tested positive for COVID-19 a long time ago you had another underlying condition called salvation and what God did for you will override what the doctor says about you sometimes in adverse situations we've got to see the power of God and Pastor Wallace I know that this last year has been rough Preaching to empty sanctuaries, walking around wearing masks, can't hug the people that God called you to lead, can't embrace them, can't shake their hands, and can't even see their faces, but you keep on leading anyhow. They, you, you can't even go and have dinner with them, can't even go have church punch in the fellowship hall, but you still lead them anyhow. Can't even have collations, but you still lead them anyhow. And I want to tell you that because you are faithful in year number two, uh, God's going to do some great things in this new year. Uh, because you've been faithful over a few things uh, and God says he'll make your ruler over many things uh, don't get discouraged because there are no amens in the house there's somebody who watched you online uh, while they were going through their storm uh, and they heard the man of God saying uh, that while you're in exile uh, trust God anyhow uh, and while you're trusting God uh, God is behind the scenes uh, working out your situation is there anybody that can give God glory? Because while you were going through, God was on the other side of your storm cloud and God was working out your situation. God tells them, tell the people to multiply. Look at what it says in verse 6. It says, increase in number. So often we find excuses of what we don't want to do. We would rather decrease than increase. But this season that we are in, understand that this is a season of increase. Well, preacher, how are you going to tell us? It's a season of increase. Our money has decreased. Yeah, but it's a season of increase. We've lost jobs. Yeah, but it's a season of increase. We, we've lost loved ones. Yeah, but it's a season of increase. And I say that because everything you lost, um, you ought to have had a prayer attached to it. Uh, so what has increased is your prayer life. Uh, what has increased is your faith life. Uh, what has increased is your trust in God. Uh, because some of the things that you lost are things that you thought you could not do without. Uh, but God has...
has a replacement plan. I wish I had some help. Uh, God will take away uh, so that God can add. Uh, come here, little boy, around 5,000 men. Uh, the little boy had a little bit of lunch. Uh, I believe the Bible said he had fish and bread. Uh, that's all his mama packed for him that day. Uh, he didn't have much. Uh, and while others saw the decrease, uh, Jesus says, I'm about to increase. Uh, and Jesus took what the little boy had, uh, gave thanks unto the Father, uh, gave it out to the 5,000 men that were sitting down. Uh, and the Bible says they took up 12 baskets of leftovers. Uh, we have been in the wilderness for 12 months now, uh, but I believe that God is about to do something. Uh, a little bit went out, uh, but God is about to show you the increase. Uh, somebody got a better job in COVID-19. Uh, somebody got a better marriage in COVID-19. Uh, somebody got a better song in COVID-19. Uh, in the storm, God will bless you. He says, do not decrease, but instead increase. And then he tells the prophet, tell him, not only increase, but to seek peace so that they can prosper. It says, seek peace and prosperity. And when the city that they're in, watch this, saints. When the city that they're in prospers, God says, I'll let you prosper as well. You see, so many of us thought that Donald Trump kept us from prospering. Donald Trump was four years president, uh, but God is God forevermore. Uh, Donald Trump tried to hurt you, uh, but God bless you anyhow. Uh, and I need you to understand, never believe that the city or circumstances that you are in uh, will block what God is trying to do for you. Uh, there's no mountain high enough uh, that can keep God from reaching you. Uh, there's no valley low enough uh, that will block the hand of God, even in the situation you you're in, God will prosper you. And every now and then, Pastor Wallace, the people are going to get too hung up about the conditions that they're in. They're going to get too caught up in the circumstances. And you've got to remind them that trouble don't last always. You've got to remind them that right where they are, God can call them to prosper. The, right in the middle of this storm. Uh, God can cause them to prosper. Uh, for God says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Uh, don't let the lies fool you. Uh, don't let them eat just anything. Uh, be careful who you let talk to your people. Uh, be careful who you let feed your people. Uh, be careful whose feet you sit at people. Uh, because there's some folk uh, that will feed you lies uh, in the name of God. Uh, and then you've got the audacity uh, to compare the lies you heard uh, to the truth that the pastor pours out Sunday after Sunday. I'm here to tell you something uh, that everybody that calls the name of Jesus uh, they don't know the name of Jesus uh, that everybody that preaches Jesus uh, they don't know the power in the name uh, everybody that wears a cross uh, has not been saved uh, everybody that wears a column uh, has not been sanctified uh, but I'll tell you how you can tell uh, you can tell the ones uh, that have been dipped in the blood of Jesus uh, because they are the ones uh, that when you're up all night worrying, uh, they're up all night praying. Uh, the ones who know the Lord, uh, that even when the sanctuary uh, has been banned of people, uh, they will get up uh, and preach the word of God uh, because they remember uh, that God said, uh, I've got a pandemic uh, congregation. Uh, I've got a group of people uh, that are pandemic um, uh, resistant. Uh, I've got a cloud of witnesses uh, that when you're all by yourself, uh, if you preach my word uh, and prophesy, uh, God says uh, that God will move uh, even when nobody else moves. 
seasons. And one thing I like about this season is God has done some purging in the church. It was part of his plan because Sean, the truth is, there have been some people that have come to church over the past three years and no matter what you said, they wouldn't say amen. No matter what you did, they wouldn't shout glory. No matter what you told them, they folded their arms and looked at you. And what God did is God said, I got to clean the house. I got to clean the pew. I got to remove some of those stiff neck folk. I got to remove some of those folk that I've been good to. But they won't open their mouths for me. But when they come back, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to put worshipers in the house. I'm going to put people in that can get happy on the call to worship. I'm going to bring some folk back that can shout during the offering. I'm going to get some folk in the pews that will think back over the past 12 months and be able to declare that I'm so glad so glad uh, that God has uh, been good to me. Uh, so Pastor Wallace, uh, you preach um, and God will uh, bless your life. Uh, you preach um, and God will uh, bless your people. Uh, you preach uh, and Scotch Plains uh, will become uh, another paradise. Uh, you preach um, and every addict um, will be delivered. Uh, you preach um, and every person uh, that doesn't know the Lord uh, will cry out to um, them. What must I do uh, to be saved? Uh, now somebody's thinking, uh, well, why do all of that uh, in an empty house? Uh, you see, you don't get it. Uh, the house uh, is never empty uh, because the Lord said uh, that if I have uh, two or three uh, that can touch and agree, uh, the Lord says, uh, I'll show up. Uh, and some of y'all say, uh, well, Fauci told us uh, that we need six feet apart and I agree with Fauci but I'm so glad that I've got that cloud of witnesses that can say I know God's plan and God's plan is to prosper you not to harm you so you keep your distance but God come in afresh because the Lord every now and then will let a fresh anointing cut loose in an empty house somebody on the line somebody on the stream ought to be able to declare that last April my living room came alive for the first time y'all gonna catch that next week my living room came alive because I had furniture in it that I refused to sit on it was a dead sofa I had a coffee table that was too nice to put my coffee on it was a dead room but when they closed up the doors God opened a brand new door and now my living room is my sanctuary my living room is my amen corner and I can shout even in exile I can give God praise I wonder is there anybody that doesn't mind giving God praise right now in your living room you might not be able to see it but thank God that you got a church but when the church has been closed give God glory that you have a living room that you have a bedroom and if it had not 
been for the Lord, you wouldn't have any of those things. So, all I'm trying to tell you is, yeah, it's been rough, but God knew the plan. God is the plan. I'm about to go and take my seat. But he says in verse number 11, God says, I know. I'm going to say it again. God says, I know the plans. I'm going to say it again. God says, I know the plans I have for you. Give him glory because God knows the plans he has for you. Goodbye, St. Paul, St. John. Goodbye, I got to go. But know that I don't know the plan that God has for your life. But what I do know is that there is a plan a plan that includes every mistake you ever made a plan that includes every tear you've ever cried a plan that includes every enemy you have it's all according to god's plan so sean God's plan in your life is for you to preach, preach in season, preach out of season, preach when they say amen, preach when they roll their eyes, preach when they go to sleep, preach when they wake up, preach when they gossip, preach when they shout because you are a preacher and God knows the plan for just like Jeremiah before your mama knew your name God had a plan before your father knew your name God had a plan and now look at you three years in this great church three years telling people that living he loved me three years here in Scotch Plains letting them know that dying he saved me three years right here in this community letting them know that buried he carried their sins far away but the plan is not over tell them that one day one day one day he's coming back glorious glorious tell them that it was friday when he died tell them that he died on calvary tell them that they nailed him in his right hand they nailed him in his left hand tell them that the nailers didn't know the plan because when they nailed him that was the alpha when they nailed him that was the omega when they pierced him that was when his blood came streaming down and i'm glad to announce that when i checked about an hour ago the blood that jesus shed on calvary the blood 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 it still works it still works it still works i know what god's plan is for you to prosper so prosper do well never grow weary of well doing be well because the lord the lord the lord is with you so saints pastor first lady sometimes the plan 
seems to be off track. Sometimes the plan seems to be missing a few pages. But trust God. Trust God and know that it's all in the plan. And that there is nothing too hard for God. 2020 caught us pastor off guard but God still kept us and now God is ready and able to do a new thing and I'm trusting God that even in this season year number three being celebrated that you couldn't have made it through one without the Lord you couldn't have made it through two without the Lord. Couldn't make it, can't make it through three without the Lord. But God wants you to know that he promised never to leave nor forsake you. And I want you to be encouraged today as we celebrate your third anniversary. Wherever you are this morning, wherever you're watching, put your hands together for your pastor. Wherever you are, give God glory for this man of God. Bless him, God. Bless him. Bless his wife. Continue to bless these people. And as we move forward from this place, let us simply be reminded that the best is yet to come. But everything that is coming, it is in God's plan. God bless you. to our church website at www.stjohnscotchplains.org. Once you are on the landing page, you will select the giving tab from the information bar. From here, you will be taken to our Simple Give page. Once on Simple Give, you will select the fund to which you wish to give, such as tithes, benevolence, or other. Next, you will enter the gift amount you wish to give. Lastly, please enter your information and press the Submit tab. Once submitted, you will receive immediate confirmation of your gift. On behalf of our pastor, the Rev. Sean T. Wallace Sr., and the St. John's family, we thank you for your gift and pray God's blessings for you and your family.